Morris in the new exclusive Snap Open Pack presents The Telltale Clue. Starring Anthony Ross. And tonight, Darren McGavin. With Phyllis Hill and Pat Breslin. Oh, Captain, Captain, there's an urgent for you. Number two. Thank you. Captain Hale. Two people killed? Right. Pick me up in a squad car. Good evening. I'm Captain Richard Hale of the Criminological Division of the Police Department. You know, every case has its telltale clue which ultimately traps the criminal. And last week, you may remember, there was a cucumber sandwich. Uh, the telltale clue in tonight's case may be a very exciting one. We're going to look for it in just 40 seconds. In a year when there's just the right amount of warm sunshine and just the right amount of gentle rain, it is then that you have a prize crop, a vintage crop of tobacco. And there's more rare vintage tobacco in Philip Morris, king size and regular, than other leading cigarettes. That's why Philip Morris, with its rare vintage tobaccos, gives you so much hearty flavor, tasty mildness, and fine full aroma. And remember, only Philip Morris comes in the new convenient snap open pack. Okay, folks, let's move back there. Come on. Let's move back. Let's move on back. All right, step back. Here come the police. This is the husband, Captain. I've given him a sedative. It's all right to question him now. How did it happen? We were, we were driving home to Leo's restaurant. Oh, uh, is it on it was our anniversary. It was our sixth anniversary. I, I just bought her this. I just bought her this new car just today. <laughs> well, I, I stopped at the curb here, and the, and, and Ellen was sitting on the right, and, and she got out first, and then I got out, and then. And a man came out of the dark and he grabbed her around the neck and he said, this is up. And he, he said, give me your money or I'll, I'll, I'll shoot your wife in the back. Well, I thought he was kidding, you know? And then I saw that he wasn't. And so I, I reached in my back pocket for my wallet and I, I guess he thought I had a gun or something. Because he shot him. He shot him. Well, I, did, I guess I went crazy or something, because I, I jumped on him, and I, I fought him, and I kind of got the gun, and I shot him, and I shot him, and, and I, the gun was empty, and I... <laughs> he got what he deserved, Mr. Williams. You move over a minute, Captain, I'm going to shot him. Now, will you get the money? Oh, all right, Riley, you know. Oh, oh, Can I take him inside now, Captain? My husband and I will take care of him. We're yes, his next-door sure. neighbors. Come on, Mr. Williams. Oh, this is the most awful thing I've ever seen and heard of in all my life. Come on, Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> Pretty dreadful business, Captain. Yeah. Probably some fool tramp who got scared when he thought Williams was armed and then started shooting him. Huh? Get this guy's fingerprints. Any other identification you can find on him. Right. Here's a gun, Lieutenant. Oh, the gun. Mm -hmm. Looks like an army gun. That tramp looks too old to have been in the army. Run the gun down. You heard it, Captain. Well, what do you think, Captain? What do I think? I think a lot of things, but I'm not sure of any of them yet. Barney's on the body, Lieutenant. Well, whole raft of identification found in tramp's clothes. Let's see what's here. The wallet, social security card, the license, a letter from his daughter. Your daughter, Sally. Mm -hmm. 
Post my California. Notify the daughter to fly in fast. Yes. Hey, Captain, look at this, will you? What is it? Captain, there are three bullet holes in the body. Three? Three? Well, didn't the uh, husband say the tramp only shot twice? Yeah. He must have been confused. <laughs> Take the bodies down the morgue. Cole, you stay here. Riley, drive me back to the station. Yes, So you got in the city at what time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. You've already been down to the morgue? Yes. Well, the captain knows you're in town and he just wants to ask you a few simple questions, Miss Bell. Oh, Captain. The young lady from California. She's already been down to the morgue. Oh, good morning, Miss Bell. Did you identify your father? Yes. I hadn't seen him for four years. After all that time, I had to find him dead. I'm sorry for your sake, miss. I don't want your sympathy. Did you know what your father had done? Yeah. I heard what they said he did. Your father killed a helpless woman. Oh, that's not true. My father wouldn't kill anybody. He just didn't have it in him to kill anyone. Now, sometimes children don't know their own parents as well as they think they do. But I knew my father. Could you tell me, why was he living the life of a tramp? He just broke down when my mother died. He didn't care about anything after that. Oh, he, he was an educated man, but somehow he just didn't care about living. Oh, but he was no murderer. Sorry. Found his fingerprints on the gun. Some of his hair clutched in the woman's hand. We ran a paraffin test on the gun. He fired it, all right, miss. I don't believe you. My father's not a murderer. Well, maybe not until he decided to commit his first hold-up. There we have some of his personal effects. His wallet identification letter from you and a ring, which was his with the initial WB. That's not his ring. It's not his ring. It doesn't even have his initials on it. Well, the last one the same. His name is Bell. Peter Bell. That ring has the initials WB on it. Could it be his middle initial? His middle initial is E. Where did you get this ring? Why, in his pocket, Captain. Oh, I knew there was something funny about this case. My father's been murdered for something he didn't do. And I'm not leaving town until I find the truth. And when I do... Never mind... Riley, put a tail on that girl. She might cause trouble. Oh, Williams. Yeah. Williams called about the insurance. What, joint? Policy, how much? 20,000. Oh, he did? Right. Thanks. Williams called. He's anxious to leave town. Well, where's he going? Oh, I guess he wants to go away and forget. He asked us to settle the case quickly so he can get some insurance money to pay the funeral expenses. What? You mean that he was that broke? Yeah. Well, how'd he ever buy his wife a new car? Maybe with her money. Come on with me. Well, it was the night of the accident. I mean, the murder. Henry and I were watching television. The fight. Henry likes the fight. Let's see, that would be about 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, could you tell me, Mrs. Jensen, when was it that you decided to go and visit the Williams? Well, right after the fight was over. I mean, what time? Do you remember? Well, there was a knockout in the first round, so it couldn't have been much after 10. About uh, 10 after, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got outside, did you see anyone in front of the house? No, I didn't. Uh, there was no light on in Mr. Williams' house, but I rang the bell anyway. Yes. There was no answer. Was his car in front? No, it wasn't. So I came back and watched television. And then, all of a sudden, there was this awful sound of shots. Uh, Henry thought it was the car backfiring at first, but... But then we heard screams, so we rushed outside, and there was Mr. Williams standing over his wife and that dreadful man. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Jensen. You've been a big help. Oh, by the way, tell me something, Mrs. Jensen. Have you seen him since that night? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, that poor man. He went away. He, he wanted to be alone. Mm -hmm. I noticed his car is still in front. Has he used it since then? No, he hasn't. He left the keys with us. He never wants to drive it again, and I can't blame him. He wants us to sell it for him. 
Do me a favor, Mrs. Jensen. Certainly, Captain. Don't sell it just yet. What? Good night, Mrs. Jensen. Good night, Captain. Good night. Good night. Wait a minute, Joe. Come over here. What are you looking for? Your flashlight down here, will you? Morning glory. Yes. I noticed before. Yeah. They go all along the driveway. Have the lab come up and photograph the wheels of this car from yeah. all angles. But I don't move the car. Wait a minute. Miss Bell. What are you doing around here? Just, just taking a walk. It's a coincidence you should decide to walk over here. I wanted to see the place where my father was killed. Is that so? Call her. Take her back to her hotel. Yes, just come with me. Leave Mr. me alone. Go by myself. I'll be sure you do. Good night, Miss Bell. Someone's inside the house. What? Is he dead, Captain? Right, Captain. Go grab that girl. Yes, of course. Riley was supposed to have been failing her. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the police department, quick. Everybody is talking about the new exclusive Philip Morris Snap Open Pack. Among busy people, you will hear... You know, I do this every day, but I always get a kick out of opening the Philip Morris Snap Open Pack. It certainly is quick and easy. And in the business world, men who appreciate speed and convenience are going for this great new Snap Open Pack. And people at play say... Oh, is that the new Snap Open Pack? I've never tried it. Let me open it, all right? Sure, go right ahead. Gee, that's fun. Yes, smokers are really enthusiastic about the new Philip Morris Snap Open Pack. You just zip the tape, snap it away like that, and it's open. Presto, it closes tight to keep cigarettes fresh and keep tobacco out of pocket or purse. But more important, inside the pack is the cigarette that contains more rare vintage tobacco than other leading cigarettes. That means richer flavor and aroma. According to U.S. government standards, tobacco like this is truly rare, truly mild. The last time vintage tobacco was available, Philip Morris bought, stored, and patiently aged tremendous quantities. Today, that foresight, plus our modern research, pays off in greater smoking pleasure. So, enjoy Philip Morris. King size or regular, now. And now, to continue the search for... The telltale clue. Yes, yes, Riley, I see. Now you're sure. Uh-huh. Yes, of course I'll tell the captain. Captain, that was Riley. The girl couldn't have done it. He tailed her every minute and she did not come into this house. That was a close call you had, Mr. Williams. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing I remember, I, I had one of those splitting headaches, you know? Yeah. And I, I took a couple of, of headache pills, and they didn't seem to do any good, so I, I took some more. And I passed out. Ooh, I must hit my head when I fell, huh? Mm. I was wearing headache pills. The doctor here pumped your stomach just in time. What do you mean they weren't headache pills? You mean you didn't know they weren't? Of course not. You didn't take them intentionally? Well, of course I didn't. What reason would I have to do a thing like... Well, I don't know. With your wife's death, a tragic murder... Look, Captain, I swear to you, I didn't try to take my own life. Well, I don't even know how those pills how those pills got in that bottle. I think we'll give you a bodyguard tonight, will you? Now, look, Captain, that, that won't be necessary. Oh, well, we'll give you one anyway. You better take care of yourself. Here, come come on, on, take it easy. Here we are. You see that label? Yes. Dale Pharmacy. Let's check this prescription. Good idea. I just ran the analysis off. Bendazole, I should say. Five of these would kill a person. 
They're only used in anesthesia. They're never given for home use. But that wasn't the prescription I filled. Ordinary headache tablets were in that bottle originally. The kind doctors mostly prescribe. Well, tell me, who did you fill the prescription for, Mr. Dale? For, uh, for Miss Lucille Stern. Mm -hmm. What's her address? 230 North Caperton Avenue. All right, thanks. <laughs> Miss Lucille Stearns? Yes. Please depart. Captain Hale. Come in, won't you? Thank you. What is it you want? Oh. Do you know a Mr. Harry Williams? Not very well. Well, you've read about him in the case in the newspaper. Certainly. Who hasn't? You ever see that before? Where'd you get those? Your friend, Harry Williams, took a handful of these by mistake. Harry took those? Oh, no. No. Harry. Is he... How is he? He almost died. We pumped his stomach. It's lucky we got there when we did, or you'd never see Harry again. Oh. What are you so upset about? The label on the bottle says they're headache pills. I know, but... Why did you change the pills in this bottle and leave them in his medicine chest? Were you trying to kill his wife? All right, yes. I hated her. She was mean. She was no good. And I'm glad she's dead. I'm glad. But I didn't kill her. You know that as well as I do. The tramp killed her. Yes, I know. Fortunately for you, he got there first. Tell me something. What did this house cost you? I don't think that's any of your business. Oh, I'd say about 18,000. 20. All of her money? So what? She bought him. He never loved her. Where did you meet this Harry Williams? I met him overseas. He was in the army. I was in an entertainment unit. Oh. An actress, hmm? Yeah. Only I never got the breaks, so I, I took up nursing. Uh-huh. That explains these tablets. They got them from a hospital. I know the public can't get them. How long have you known Williams? Oh, a little over four years. Do you have any idea what it's like to love someone for four years? To love someone and warn him? And know that you can't have him? Why wouldn't she give him a divorce? No, Harry thought I had talent. He was going to help me in the theater. But every time he did, she stopped him. Oh. Nice picture of you and Harry overseas, huh? Yeah. Touching inscription from your Willie boy. Willie boy. W.B. Tell me, Miss did you give him this ring? Where'd you get that? I found it. Good night, Miss Lee. You've got the wrong door. I'm at the right door. You Harry Williams? I'm Mr. Williams. What do you want? I think you should ask me in. Sort of a nice thing to do in remembrance of our uh, mutual friend, Pete Bell. Mutual friend? 
Didn't he die on your sidewalk? You mean that monster who killed my wife? You didn't think he was such a monster when you met him at the Eagle Hotel. Who are you? Stu Ryan's my name. I was a good friend of Pete Bell's. Told me about meeting you at the Eagle Hotel. What else did he tell you? Says he was meeting you at 10 o'clock in front of your house. Said you wanted him to fake a hold up so that your wife would turn over her money to him. And you and he would divide. It wasn't a bad idea, but uh, what happened? What went wrong? I... Get out of my house. Okay, Harry, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll be shoving off. There's a lot of people who might believe my story. <laughs> Wait a minute. How much do you want? Real cheap. A thousand bucks. Nothing to you. Fortune to me. I'll have it for you tomorrow. What time? Eight o'clock? Right here. Okay, Harry. Good night. Captain Hale. Captain Hale, this is Harry Williams. I'm being blackmailed. Blackmailed? A tramp just came into my house and demanded that I give him $1,000. Well, why? He claims that he thinks that he has damaging evidence against me in connection with my wife's death. I pretended to go along with him. I told him I'd meet him here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock to pay him off. Well, you just keep that appointment, Mr. Williams. Make up an envelope filled with newspapers. We'll do the rest. I'll be here at 8. That Williams gets smoother all the time. As soon as we get close to him, he comes up with another alibi. Well, Captain, have you seen this mm -hmm. yet? What is it? It's a lab report. The morning glory is under the car tires. Mm hmm? Of course. Of course, this is the evidence that will do it. <laughs> Good evening, Harry. And you're prompt, they see. Here's your money. Huh. Now, mind if I count it? It's all there. Who's that? Why, I don't know. One of the neighbors, possibly. There he is, Captain. That's the one who's blackmailing me. What there he is, right hand. Hand. Him. We're not only taking him, Mr. Williams, we're taking you also on what? a much more serious charge. What do you mean? Charging you with the murder of your wife, a man named Peter Burrow. In exactly 38 seconds, Captain Hale will give you the telltale clue which broke tonight's case. Did you know that one out of every three smokers prefers a king-size cigarette? And the finest king-size is Philip Morris, because like the famous regular size, it contains more rare vintage tobacco than other leading cigarettes. Vintage tobacco means hearty flavor, tasty mildness, fine, full aroma. Remember, only Philip Morris has the new exclusive snap-open pack. It opens in a jiffy, closes tight to keep in flavor of those rare vintage tobaccos. Get Philip Morris today. It was a carefully worked out plan, Williams. When you got home that night, the tramp you had hired to help you with a fake holdup was late. So you had to stall for time. You thought you couldn't hide in the house because the neighbors might drop in to visit you, so you had to hide in the driveway. You gave your wife some stall. But suddenly you spotted the tramp approaching. So you gave your wife another excuse and backed out of the driveway. But what you didn't know was that all the while there was a witness. A silent witness watching a murder about to be committed. The tires of your car were picking up the morning glories that grow along the driveway. When you got in front of the house, you let your wife out of the car, the camp approached ready to play his part, and you <coughs> killed them both. Look at this. 
This is the telltale clue that was waiting in the tires in front of your car, ready to convict you. The morning glories that grow along your drive. I never went that driveway. Oh, yes, you did. Furthermore, the morning glories are closed, just as they always are at night. We're arresting you for murder. Next week, the telltale clue will bring you the case of the lady in the lake. It's the story of a beautiful woman who was mysteriously washed up on the shores of a little lake. I think you'll find it very exciting. Until then, good night for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. who prefer a filter cigarette. Remember, a filter alone is not enough. For maximum protection, it should be recessed. Most filters reach right to the tip, but only Parliament of leading filter brands has a recessed filter. So trap tars and nicotine cannot touch the lips or teeth. Yes, for pleasure plus extra protection. Smoke Parliament. Tune in again next week when Philip Morris will again present The Telltale Clue. Next week, The Lady in the Lake, starring Anthony Ross and George McGreedy, with Parker Friendly and Betty Garr. The Lady in the Lake is a story of violence and fear amidst the calm of a beautiful countryside. Tune in next week, same time, same channel, for The Lady in the Lake. Put your signature right on the line. Get your name on this bond or on one for $50 or $100. Whichever one you buy, when you're buying a United States savings bond, you're signing up for a secure future. And United States savings bonds are now even better, for the rate of interest is greater. When you sign on the line for a savings bond, that bond starts earning for you right away. Yes, savings bonds earn 3% for you when held till maturity and earn more money than ever before in less time.